Underneath this camouflage is the production version of the BMW Neue Klasse SUV, but now we can finally stop calling it the Neue Klasse. This is the BMW iX3. It's finally coming to market later this year, but I've just spent the day behind the wheel of the thing. And let me tell you, I can say I'm pretty impressed. This is a mass market SUV comparable to what the X3 is today, but despite that, it actually has really good handling. I spent a lot of time driving around on the handling tracks here at BMW's test facility in France, and I was really impressed by what I felt. It has really good compliance. It's the kind of thing that you would expect from an everyday compact SUV, the kind of thing that you could commute in or take your kids to school in without anybody complaining. But yet the handling dynamic on the track is actually really remarkably good. There's a fair bit of body roll in there, sure, but you can get through tight corners very quickly, hustle this thing around, and it responds really well. And a lot of that comes down to what's called the heart of joy, which is the new super brain inside this thing that's controlling all the active systems within the car. It really combines everything from how it applies the power to how it applies the braking, it combines them in a really different way than we've seen anything before. Instead of working with a lot of different suppliers for ABS and traction control, stability control, BMW brought all that in-house. It's all handled by one chip, which means they can control everything really with a lot of fine detail. And the most impressive way that you feel that is actually not how you drive it, but how you stop it. This thing comes to a stop in the most smooth way possible. I've driven Rolls Royces, Bentleys, all sorts of wonderful cars like that. This thing stops so perfectly smoothly, you can't even tell. In fact, I closed my eyes at one point when the car was coming to a stop, and I couldn't tell when it had stopped. That's how smooth it is. That's really impressive, but with over 400 horsepower, it's also pretty quick too. BMW is also saying 400 miles of range from this thing on the EPA cycle, which is quite impressive. From a battery pack, that's somewhere around 100 kilowatt hours. They haven't said the exact size yet. They also said 400 kilowatt charging in this, and we did see a demonstration of that. This thing went from about 6% to over 50% in 10 minutes, and it did get over 400 kilowatt. It was about 403 kilowatt maximum speed. Average in that time was about 318 kilowatts. So the average charging time for this in 10 minutes is higher than a lot of EVs on the road today can achieve at their peak. That's really impressive, but even more impressive is what's going on on the inside. So we're inside the iX3 now, and some parts of this are familiar if you've driven an iX or an i4 or something like that lately, but there's honestly a lot more new here than we've seen in any car before. Beginnings with the infotainment screen here, which is obviously a bit of a leaning transitional shape, which is different than before. The software interface is quite different too. This is BMW OS X. has a lot more changes in here. Things are quite a bit different than we've seen before, but the bigger change is this panoramic vision, which runs the full width of the windscreen up there. As you cycle through different drive modes, for example, you get different information up there. A G meter appears. You can see your throttle position. You can even see the RPM of the electric motor, which is something you don't see in an EV too often. But that replaces your gauge cluster. It's right up there in your line of sight, and you still got a heads-up display on top of that as well. So certainly no shortage of information available to you as well. The steering wheel is also quite different too. Not only the shape, which is uh, quite odd, um, and the fact that the spokes here are just kind of virtual, but we've got these dynamic buttons here, which appear or disappear depending upon what mode you're in. So for example, the speed up or speed down buttons only appear when you actually have cruise control enabled. If you don't have it enabled, they just fade into black and disappear. The call button here turns green when you're getting a call, for example. So I'm not a big fan of capacitive touch buttons, but the way that BMW has kind of brought this in to make them appear and, and disappear is actually leaning into that functionality a little bit more than you see in other cars. But I have a tendency to hit these things accidentally. I think the way they split the spokes out will make that a little bit harder to do. We're going to have to wait and see until we get these on the road. Now, I can't show you what this thing looks like quite yet, but you get a pretty good idea of the profile. And the shape, to me, honestly, looks as much as a wagon as an SUV, which to me is a very good thing as a fan of fast wagons, but you can make up your mind and let me know in the comments. Does this look like an SUV to you or more like a station wagon? Either way, we won't have to wait too long to find out. This thing will be getting unveiled for real, minus the camouflage, in September of this year at the IAA show here in Germany. And then after that, it'll go into production sometime before the end of the year for a cost that is yet to be determined. But honestly, I think that this could be the EV that finally changes a lot of people's minds about whether they actually need inter internal combustion in their lives. We'll have to wait and see.